Well, hello, I'm Doug Apple, back with another special interview for you today, and it's Valentine's Week. We can talk about loving one another. That's a very biblical concept, right? And we talk about share health care, we, and we share medical expenses through share health care. That is a form of loving one another, after all. We're on the phone line with Mike Sharman of Share Healthcare. We're going to talk a little bit about this idea of loving one another by sharing medical expenses and doing just what God's Word tells us to do. You've been hearing about Share Healthcare here on Wave 94. They bought a little air time. You've heard some of their commercials, but now we're going to talk about it in Valentine's Week from the perspective of loving one another. I could ask you this. If you have health insurance, do you love one another at your health insurance company? Of course, the command still holds, but it might not be the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of the folks over at your health insurance company, even though it should be. But at Share Healthcare, that is what they were built to do from the ground up as a healthcare sharing ministry. So here to talk about it is Mike Sharman. Well, thank you, Doug. I appreciate it so much. And happy Valentine's week to everybody. One, it's interesting that Valentine's was a uh, a religious observation, let's say, from St. Valentine. Uh, so we kind of want to remember the origin of things. And then get back to the substance of it, not just have tradition, but it is actual love, which is sacrifice, of course. Um, And getting to the origin of that is interesting, too. Sacrifice is a a compound of two Latin words, sacra pacer, uh, to make holy. To make what holy? Just the common everyday thing. You have something that is just a, a common everyday thing and and you have offered it to the Lord, and by that offering, you've made it holy. So our, our waking times, our first words to our husband or our wife, our first words to our children, our first words to our neighbor, did we consecrate them to the Lord? And by just that common greeting, that just every day, um, how are you doing this morning? Have we made that holy by by the offering of it? And... Everybody in the United States has in common the fact that they are going to need, at some point, health care. And they have in common the fact that health care is pretty expensive, um, and so is the insurance that um, supports it or, or provides for it. And when we think of love, true love is, at its essence, trust. We trust one another. We rely upon them. And so in the context that you mentioned, Doug, of share health care, it's not insurance. You, you don't have a contract with the other members. You don't have a contract with an entity that says, we guarantee you're going to get X, Y, and Z. Um, the whole concept of health care sharing is pretty strange to a lot of people. It relies upon trust, the trust you have uh, as a member in the other members and the trust the other members have in you. And that is a very important part of love. When we look at the scriptural uh, verses on um, on the, the one another verses on on love, First um, Peter one twenty two. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Boy, is that packed for about three or four Sundays of sermon. Mm-hmm. Because of the fact that you've purified your soul, well, how have I purified my dark soul? By obeying the truth. Well, what is the truth? Well, Jesus is the truth. But in obeying the truth through the Spirit, I, I couldn't do it myself. I could not purify my soul myself. I could not obey my um, just on my own. I wouldn't know the truth just on my own. I need to have it through the Spirit. And then in sincere love of the brethren. Okay, that's the proof. That's exhibit A. Have I done those things? Um, Well, the proof is I I love the brethren. Who are the brethren? They're the others in the church. They are the one another in all of these various one another scriptures. And then love one another fervently with a pure heart. So we do want people to feel comfortable about share health care feeling comfortable and being able to trust the other members that they will come through 
um, with their sharing contributions when they have a medical expense. But what's a pure heart? A pure heart is you're just wanting to share for others. Oh, and it's great if they share for you, but a pure heart is completely generous, completely giving. So that was First Peter one twenty two. Now let's give uh, if if people don't know about Share Healthcare, let's get them just a little explanation as we go into this. So Share Healthcare is a Christian ministry. It's a five hundred one c three charitable organization under the IRS. Uh, it has um, gotten the recognition as a healthcare sharing ministry from the federal agency that does that, the uh, CMS. And um, how does it work? Well, the members share. The most common program we have is the one that's one forty nine for a single per month, two forty nine for a couple, three forty nine for a family of four, and then fifty dollars for each uh, child after that. And um, when a person has a medical need, the amount that is necessary to share that need goes into their bank account, and vice versa when the other people have it. Um, so it's, it's organized. It's um, has a, a basic structure, but its foundation that that structure rests upon is the Bible. You know, Share Healthcare's primary verse is Hebrews thirteen sixteen. It's not quite the love verse there, Doug, but it it has the essence of love. Mm-hmm. Hebrews thirteen sixteen. But do not forget to do good and to share, for which such sacrifices God is well pleased. Uh, so. Another one of the love one of the verses is 1 John 3.11. For this is the message that you've heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. That's the essence, the beginning, the foundation of what Christ's message was to us as the body of Christ, that we should love one another. Uh, you probably heard the... Um, the old expression, when one of the most famous coaches began his season every year, uh, he said to the returning football players and the new ones, gentlemen, this is a football. In order for us to continue practicing at a high level, we need to go back to the beginning, look at the basics, look at the, the origins of, of what we're all about. First John 3.11, and for this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. And First John repeats that a number of times. Um, so First John three twenty three, and this is His commandment that we should believe on the name of His Son Jesus Christ and love one another, as He gave us commandment. First John four seven, beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Beloved. I mean, and isn't that interesting that he begins the sentence with an expression of love? Mm-hmm. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Selfishness is of man, but love is of God. And then he gives that proof first, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Because we can have people who really care about each other who don't know about don't know the Lord. We can have people who love one another fervently and don't know the Lord. But they don't know that that impulse to love is given to them by God. And they can complete it and understand it more fully and more fully live it out if they know God. Love is of God. Wherever we see love, it, that impulse came from God. There's just so much um, that we have in the love scriptures you know, right now, people are wondering, um, is America at, at near the edge of the cliff? Is America on the edge of the cliff? Is America holding by its fingertips on the edge of the cliff? Or is America falling off the cliff? And it, it's a great worry. But what we know is the cure to that is Christ. And how does the cure get presented to people? by Christ, bride, the church. And so in John, not the first, second, third John, but the John chapter in the gospel, John thirteen thirty five, by this all will know that you are my disciples 
if you have love for a, one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And that's one of the great motivations for Share Healthcare. That by the um, effectiveness of Share Healthcare, by the coming together of the body of Christ in this effort of sharing one another's medical expenses, the watching world will see that. All will see that we are disciples of Christ. We're not in some pseudo insurance thing. We're not in um, a healthcare cooperative. We are in a Christian ministry that shares one another's medical expenses out of love for one another and out of a desire to follow biblical truth. And because of that, it works well. It works in a way that is vastly more affordable than insurance. You know, the um, annual amount for a family of four will be right around 4200 with share health care. It's around $22,000 hmm. for the average cost of insurance. When the world sees that, knows about that, and, and looks at, well, what's the difference? They're both human. They both have a set of humans in them. One's 4200 or so. The other's 22000 well, well, what's the difference? They're both in the same cultures, et cetera. Both in the same nation, go to the same hospitals. What's the difference? Well, the difference is John thirteen thirty five. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. John fifteen twelve. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. And we have that example that Christ loves us even in the healthcare issues because whatever uh, set of statistics you want to look at and whatever situation you want to look at. Christians have better outcomes than non-Christians. Yes, we all um, are going to have death, destruction, or decay, um, but Christians wind up better on those deals than non-Christians. We're all, the rain falls on the just and the unjust, but Christians tend to have at least a small spiritual umbrella that protects them to a, to a better degree than the rest of the people in the crowd with them. Is that is just that way. Uh, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Now, Mike, somebody might be listening right now and think, uh, well, you know, love one another. That's all well and good. But if I get in a big medical jam, I don't need pie in the sky. I'm going to need a, a lot of cold, hard cash. Well, remember, part of that love was the, the trust and the sacrifice. Um, our verse as I mentioned, Hebrews thirteen sixteen, but do not forget to do good and to share for which such sacrifices God is well pleased. Well, we give our offering. And when you have a, a collective number of people, and, and, that offering and can I want to emphasize big. that they, because if sometimes people will think, oh, and we've even used the illustration passing the plate. So mm -hmm. emphasize that the collective number a little more. Well, there's, Let's use a, a, a relatively small church example. Is Let's say you have 40 or 50 people in it. Well, you don't have 40 or 50 people who are sick all the time. If you have a church that's 4,000 or 5,000, you don't have 4,000 or 5,000 people who are sick all the time. Um, and so the small number of people who are ill are able to have their financial uh, needs paid for by the large number of people that there are around them. And that's exactly how share health care works. And because we do practice it in biblical truth, we don't have to share on things related to alcoholism. We don't have to share on things related to tobacco misuse. We don't have to share on things related to homosexuality uh, or transgender. Uh, all those things. And then, you know, stress is one of the major issues of uh, health problems. And Christians, just because they can go to God in prayer when they are desperate and in deep despair, their stress is alleviated to a, a better degree. So all the, uh, the financial problems that might be there for the world around is not there for Christians. So that amount of ill people and the degree to which they are ill is less than it is in the surrounding culture. And we have, with Share Healthcare, the everybody belongs to the has a bank account in the same bank. It their monthly contribution goes into that. When somebody has a medical need, the algorithm hits it 
and the right amount of money goes into the um, person in need, goes out from there to the health care provider. And what stays in the other member's account? Well, what is not needed? Well, ever since share health care has begun as a, um, in this modern sense that it has, um, because its origins are with plain people, with old German Baptists. So ever since it's been interdenominational and national, it, it's always had more money available to share than the medical needs that are there. And significantly so. It, it tends to be, and I don't want to get too much locked into statistics because mm-hmm. they might change later, and somebody might remember this statistic. But we've always had at least double the amount available for sharing than the amount that is needed to share. And and that is extraordinarily significant. And so that amount that's available remains in the other member's bank account until it is needed. Now, that might change because there might be a series of months in which we have a a number of large medical expenses. And so that it might come out to be 100%, 100%. But so far, it, it has not, whether we have just a series of small needs or whether we've had a series of large needs. So if people are thinking, maybe that's for me, what else might you tell them? I'd say look around and look around at what you think of um, the surrounding culture. And in all likelihood, you've been thinking, what can I do to make a difference? Well, what you can do to make a difference is flex your spiritual muscles. Flex your freedom muscles. Flex your economic muscles. Learn to get more self-sufficient within the body of Christ so that you're not as dependent upon the surrounding economy, not as dependent upon the culture, not as dependent upon the government. And by doing that, you can help change the culture. And that's just how is the body of Christ going to make an impact on the, uh, the surrounding uh, world the surrounding culture that we're in, how are we going to make an impact if we aren't being impactful? Um, and m- remember, we had that verse that was, you know, this is how they're going to know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. When, when people are seeing that, talking about that, when um, programs, you know, radio shows such as yours are beginning to proclaim, well, here is something that works really significantly better than what is common out there, what is the norm, which is insurance. I mean, we just think, well, gee, I have to have insurance. Well, well, why? Why can't the church do this? And when we begin seeing that it works so well with healthcare sharing, we not only um, have enough to share one another's medical expenses at that low 149, 249, 349 per month rate that I mentioned, we have more than enough. When people begin seeing that, and when people around us, our neighbors, begin seeing that, they begin asking the why. Why is that happening? And that gives us the chance to tell about the real power that belief has. The real power is not just a, a, um, I, I think so, I believe, so it'll happen. I mean, it's not the power of positive thinking. It is the power of the Holy Spirit, and we get to tell them about that. Since you have purified your souls, said First Peter one twenty two, in obeying the truth through the Spirit and sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. It's that Spirit that does it. We don't have the power in ourselves. And we get to tell our neighbors they can have that power too. And it can make a practical change in their life. That's the big thing. It's a practical change that's observable by our neighbors and observable by ourselves. Remember I said one of the essence of uh, love is trust. Well, when we see that it's worked for us, or we read in, in the newsletter that we put out with Share Healthcare of how it's helped other people, that builds our trust in, in this um, biblical tool that we've been using. And so that builds our trust in the whole concept. You know, there's, there's no Christian does not doubt at times or has low points in their um, spiritual walk. And so when we see these practical changes that are there, and the practical application of biblical truth, we see that it works well, works excellently, works more abundantly than we ever could have thought. That helps build our trust and our love 
for God in that He first loved us and thought of all this for us. I really like what you said there a moment ago, Mike, when you said, why can't the church do this? Well, the church is doing it corporately gathered together under the banner of Share Healthcare. So if you're listening today and you'd like more information, you can give them a call and just talk to somebody at 1-844-SHARE-HC, or you can find more information on their website, sharehealthcare.com. We hope you have a great Valentine's week. And that's been Mike Sharman of Share Healthcare. And for Wave 94, I'm Doug Apple. Doug Apple.